YouTube thought I'd do a quick video here. If you've been watching my videos, or if you're new to this video, I'm doing a video series on how to use a solar panel to power your GMRS 2 area repeater. You're probably wondering why would I want to do that. Well, you could use the solar power for a backup. If the main power goes off, it automatically goes into the solar power. Um, your repeater will keep working. Or if you're going to put this repeater in a location where there's no power, this would be a very good way of, of doing it is using solar power. So it can charge the battery as it's, you know, in between, not in usage, you'll keep that battery charged. That's the beauty of solar power. So this video, I'm going to show you a overview of a cheap solar panel that I bought off of eBay. Um, I'm, I'm liking it so far. Uh, what you get for $26.59 free shipping, you get a 200 watt solar panel. Now, I'll be doing more videos uh, here soon that are going to uh, let you figure out how big of a panel do you need for your setup. Okay, there's a calculation you can do. Um, also, too, that video is going to tell you what angle you need to set your panel at for the best performance uh, for your location. I'm going to have that in that video. And we're going to talk about different controllers in that video. But for this video, we're just going to talk about this. This is a 200 watt panel. Uh, it does come with the, obviously, the panel. The panel is 11 inches by 11 inches. It's real thin, real light. Um, this panel has kind of a unique feature. It does have a little circuit plug in here. You can plug in USBs or a, or a, a, a um, C type charger. So you could, it comes with this cable where it has different ends for charging phones. You can plug that cable in directly and charge your phone um, because it has its own little circuitry there. We are not going to be using that. We're going to be using the DC one, which is the round one. We want the 12 volts to charge a 12 volt battery. So that's what we're going to do. But you get the panel, you get the charging unit, you get the cigarette lighter adapter, you get the uh, USB adapter I showed you, you get the um, alligator clips to hook to a battery, and you get suction cups, which I won't be using those because I'll make my own bracket set to the right angle for the best performance in my area. So now, the only thing it does not come with, which is not a big deal, um, but is the cable that hooks from the panel to the charger. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Walmart and get me a, a DC cigarette lighter socket so that I can plug this into the socket and the socket will be hooked onto here. That way I don't, I don't have to cut this end off. So I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. Now of course you're going to need some little extra wire that doesn't come with. You're going to need a wire to hook to your battery and then the wire that's going to use for your um, wiring up your repeater setup. So, but that's in the, that's going to be the next video. Uh, we're going to be using we're going to be hooking this up to a fuse block, so everything's all fused. Um, although this does have its own fuse in here, I'd like to make sure we have you know just it doesn't hurt to double fuse sometimes, but this does have its own fuse. But nevertheless, I'm going to hook up a cigarette lighter socket so I can hook this up to this panel uh, or this controller. This controller does have um, uh, screw terminals on here so that you can uh, hook up your wiring. You can't see that, but it is marked on here. The first one is for the panel. Remember, pay attention to polarity. It does say plus and minus on here. The middle is the battery, and then the last two is the load, or in this case, what you want to power in this in our case will be the repeater setup and that can be the repeater a mini pc a raspberry pi whatever you want to hook up that's the low part of it so um but yeah that's 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 how uh this is going to be uh hooked up now you, you have to supply some of your own wire not terrible now if you go to the ad here and the ad like i said it's 26 dollars um if you kind of want to see how to do this if you're going to be running an inverter it tells you right here how to hook this up. Your inverter would hook up to a battery. You're probably, if you don't know what an inverter is, inverter converts DC to AC. So let's say I'm not able to hook up my repeater direct to the battery like I can with the red of this repeater. I have to plug it in. Well, that inverter lets me plug it into AC. Now, we'll do a video on inverters because there's different types of inverters. There's pure sine wave. 
There's all kinds of different types of inverters. And you got to figure out how big of an inverter you may need. In my case, the good news is I don't need much of an inverter, if at any at all, because I am going to be using the Redivis repeater. That is a 12-volt DC repeater, so I can hook it up to, to a cigarette lighter and hook it up to the battery direct. My interface board is also 12-volt DC, uh, and my mini PC is also 12-volt DC. So I can hook all those up to a fuse block and then have it hooked up to the battery. So if I do need an inverter, it's going to be a small one to power the hot spot. Uh, depending on where I put this repeater. Now, if, I, if I'm going to do this at my house, I can just use my Wi-Fi that's outside, and I don't need a hotspot. But I, but if I need to power a um, hotspot at a different location, I just need a small inverter just to power that. So that's good news. Cheaper building, cheaper build cost compared to uh, a 50-watt repeater where you might, you know, you're going to need a little bit bigger batteries and all that. But that's how you would hook it up to an inverter. Uh, the only wires are not showing you here are the two wires that would go to your repeater setup to power your repeater. So, but like I said, it's 200 watt, um, 12 volt, 100 amp, um, it, uh, which is nice. And another thing that's nice too is if, let me go to the camera here. Um, this is expandable, meaning this controller can handle up to 100 amps and up to 1,800 watts input. So what I could have done if I wanted to, I could have bought two of these kits, kept a controller for a spare, put it off to the side, hook up two panels to one controller and have 400 watts instead of 200 watts. So I could have done that. Uh, and I still may. We'll see. I'm, I'm going to be, I got to build this. We're going to do some measurements with voltages. We're going to be doing a lot of neat stuff. So, but this is expandable. I don't need to buy a new controller to get more, to use more solar panels on it. That's what's nice. So that's the nice thing about it. So let's do a little testing. Let's hook up this cigarette lighter to this solar panel. Let's see what I get. Well, the red light's on, so that's a good sign. I'm getting power already. Remember, obviously, I'm inside of a workshop here, so I only have an LED light on it that's about three feet above us. So it's not very bright in here. So let's hook up a meter. Let's see what the, what's, no, let's hook up a meter and see what we got here, okay? Now, the meter I'm using is right here. You probably can't see that, so let's go ahead and turn on the meter there. So what you see on your screen is exactly what this meter is reading right here. It's the same. It's the same thing, just easier for you to read. So right now we're getting four volts coming off that solar panel. We're only hooked up. Let's move all this. As you can see, we're only hooked up to the solar panel. Nothing else. I'm getting four volts just in in the shop here. Let's turn on another light. Let's turn on another light. Well, up to five volts. So if you angle this, let's let's play with the angle. Let's move the light over a little bit more. Okay. Now let's play with the angle. And do you see how important the angle is? It gives me more, more voltage when you have the angle right. Now obviously I'm angling to this to this lamp you see in the reflection. So let's say this lamp is the sun. That's why we have to angle the panels according to, to where we live. So we can get the maximum performance of our panel. You see how that's making a difference? I'm going to angle that. So, you know, in this case, I can just move the lamp over and get my full. full. But obviously, when we do go to mount outside, I need to angle this towards the sun better. And let's say this lamp is sun. Do you see how it's already making a difference? So let's see if we can maybe back this up. Nope. So that's why angling is so important when you do this. So there's a website that will tell you how to how, what angle you need. Is it 42 degrees? Is it 32 degrees? Simple website. You enter in some numbers. No big deal. Really easy to do. Um, and then you average it depending on if you have winter where you live too. So, but that's working really good. That's pretty sensitive. Wow, that's that's working working good. So I, I'm liking that. So. Uh, yeah, I, like I say, we'll be doing some more videos here. Uh, you know, if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. Please subscribe. Thank you, and have a good day.